Carbon farming is slowly turning out to be one of the most revolutionary new ways to farm while also helping the environment. However, the general public is still wary of this radical new concept, and many people really aren't ready to implement it. But now, a group of artists have joined hands in an effort to help raise awareness and clear up some of the misconceptions about carbon farming. So let's take a look at that, along with some other related news. So what even is carbon farming? Carbon farming is a pretty unique and unconventional form of farming. It consists of storing carbon from the atmosphere in a pool through various different processes and adding it to the soil, a process known as carbon sequestering. When the carbon is sequestered into the soil, it causes the amount of carbon in the actual atmosphere to decrease, improving the quality of the air, while the carbon itself provides a lot of more nutrition to the soil without polluting it, quote unquote. In fact, the carbon might actually clean the soil as it's used. Carbon sequestering increases the overall organic matter in the soil, which leads to the soil being able to produce greater yields of crops and retaining a lot more water. This process in its entirety is called Called carbon farming. The great thing about carbon farming is that it's beneficial to the world in basically every way. The crop yield is not only higher, but they're also of a much higher quality. And the quality of the soil itself is better. And water retention, which is one of the biggest problems farmers face these days due to climate change, is massively improved, leading to better water management. And on top of all of that, the air quality is massively improved. The only downside to all of this is that carbon farming can be quite expensive and people simply don't realize its benefits. That's why it's up to the governments to incentivize the use of carbon farming. How artists are already starting a conversation about it. Australia is a country that depends heavily on farming to meet its economic needs. Yet, at that same time, Australia is now suffering from more droughts than it ever has before. Older farming practices are also having disastrous effects on the water level in various Australian farming regions. And climate change overall has made farming in Australia a ticking time bomb. Some farming activists have come up with a solution to these problems. Carbon farming. There might not be a better place to start implementing carbon farming practices than in Australia, a rich nation that's heavily dependent on farming. Australian farmers, people, and the government could easily afford a shift to these practices, but they'll most definitely need a push to do so. That's why a group of artists have gotten together in various cities across Australia as a part of the Painted River Project. These artists are creating artwork that depicts the benefits of carbon farming, holding seminars to teach farmers about these new practices, and most importantly, they're lobbying the government to adopt these practices as well. The main purpose of the project is to protect Australia's riverways and the more efficient use of water that would be caused by carbon farming would be an excellent place to start from. Of course, not everyone's on board, but the important part is that a conversation is being started. If more and more people just start talking about this farming practice, there would be a higher chance of it being adopted by the general public. Next, Organic Valley bets big on carbon farming. Organic Valley is one of the largest organic farming companies in the United States, and they're one of the world leaders when it comes to reducing greenhouse gas emissions and improving the agriculture industry as a whole. One of the newest ways that they're doing Doing so is through carbon farming. Organic farms are applying carbon farming to over 189,000 pastures across the United States, making them the largest organization to be doing such a thing. But they're not the only ones that might take an approach like this. Bill Gates, over the course of the past decade, has become the largest private farmland owner in the United States. And one of the main reasons he actually bought all of that farmland is to apply new, environmentally friendly farming practices to boost the productivity of these farmlands. One of the most obvious places he would apply this would be organic carbon farming. Billionaires like Bill Gates, I mean, they have a lot of money at their disposal to just throw at these crazy new concepts. But the real revolution would begin when the average farmer starts using these practices. There are so many people that don't even know what carbon farming is, which is why it's so important to start a conversation about it. Is farming causing an insect decline? Even though farming has led to a lot of benefits in the global society, there might also be a lot of drawbacks. According to the UK researchers, unsustainable farming practices mixed in with climate change are causing an insect decline, unlike the world has ever seen before. The insects in question are absolutely vital to our planet's ecosystem, and the loss of these insects would result in lower crop yields, a loss of pollinators, and just a general decline in global food security. The effects of the loss of these insects would be felt all around the world. And as all of the land in the world is taken over by either farms or cities, there would be few spaces left for these insects to thrive. One of the main ways that these insects could possibly be saved is through environmentally friendly farming practices that cut down overall emissions. But aside from that, there's also the need to protect these natural habitats of these insects. People need to be able to grow more food in limited space, even though that might seem like a long shot. For now, farming overall is getting more and more sustainable. There needs to be a coordinated effort, though, to tackle climate change and to protect the natural habitat of insects. Next, how robots can revolutionize farming. Agriculture takes up to 70% of the world's freshwater reserves, about. Even though it's used to pretty much feed the world, it's not sustainable. One company called Iron Ox claims to tackle this problem by turning farms into 
giant pieces of tech. Ironox Farms would have numerous robotic, autonomous devices working 24 hours a day to take care of the plants, to actively monitor them, and get them just the right amount of nutrition that they need, and do pretty much everything else. It's estimated that up to 90% of the fresh water that'll be used on these crops never ends up reaching the plants. The vast majority of it gets wasted, but with Ironox's new robots and technology, they'd be able to reduce that water waste to a tenth of its regular levels. Ironox also solves the problem by reducing farmland using indoor farming space. This way, warehouses and entire cities could produce as many crops as an outdoor farm that is multiple times the size, all while requiring a lot fewer resources. Of course, the startup costs for these indoor farms would be hefty, but the overall effect it would have can't be understated. Now let's talk about how Sri Lanka is still facing the effects of disastrous farming policies. With all the talk of governments taking more initiative for sustainable and organic farming practices, it's important to understand that a lot of blunders can be made along the way. A few years ago, the government of Sri Lanka decided to ban all kinds of non-organic farming by banning fertilizers and GMOs from being used on their farms. This ended up accidentally causing one of the biggest food shortages in that country's history, and it plunged the nation into the worst economic crisis it's had to date. And this is despite the fact that Sri Lanka is one of the most fertile regions of the entire world. The weather there is tropical, and it's a place where fruits grow in insane amounts naturally. According to The Guardian, it's now becoming more and more difficult to even find something in Sri Lanka that's willing to work on farms. Most farmers have left for cities to find other jobs there, as the government regulations significantly cut back on their profits and their yields. Next, farming gets too expensive in Ireland. Another thing farmers have to worry about aside from climate change is the massive rise in global commodity prices. The price crunch is particularly bad in Ireland, where over 60% of farmers say that rising prices are their biggest concerns. This unprecedented rise in prices might lead to a lot lower yields and manpower being available for farming, and thus resulting in food shortages. Many farmers are now already working another job on top of farming, and eventually, it'll get to a point where it just gets to be too much for them. However, global prices are sure to decline, though, and the overall sentiment in Ireland is, isn't really that depressing either. Over 58% of farmers said that they had a positive outlook for the next year, which is actually 2% higher than it was in 2021. And when the prices stabilize a bit, it could potentially lead to a new farming boom in Ireland, as farmers won't have to take up two jobs. And that's a wrap for today's video. Do you think that carbon farming could help save our planet? Let us know in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one. It's like this, and I'll see you.